covalent bonding. We'll start by introducing covalent compounds, then start covalent bonding and Lewis diagrams. We'll have some practice drawing Lewis diagrams, moving on to polyatomic ions, then exceptions to the octet rule, molecular geometry, and then some practice with molecular geometry, and finally, polarity. Introduction to covalent compounds. There are three basic types of chemical bonds. We have ionic bonds, where the electrostatic attraction between ions forms ionic compounds. Covalent bonds, valence electrons are shared between atoms, and they form either network solids or molecules. And then finally, metallic bonds. The valence electrons of many metal atoms are shared to form a sea of electrons within a metallic solid. This unit will be studying covalent bonds. How ionic or covalent to bond, ionic or covalent, depends on the difference in electronegativity between the atoms. The smaller the difference, the more likely electrons will be shared and the bond will be considered covalent. The greater the difference, the more likely electrons have been transferred and the atoms are then ionized, resulting in an ionic bond. Below, we examine the electronegativity difference between fluorine, which is represented by F, and some other atoms. Here's fluorine over here. The electronegativity of the atoms is shown below each atomic symbol, including that of fluorine, which is 4.0, right over there. So lithium here, it would be 1.0. The electronegativity difference between fluorine and each atom is shown at the bottom of the chart. As the difference decreases, and it's going this way, you can see it's going from 3 to 2.4 to 2, etc. As that decreases, the bond between F, fluorine, and the other atom becomes increasingly covalent. While bond character between ionic and covalent is a spectrum, a continuous spectrum, we can make a few simplifications. Ionic bonds occur when the difference in electronegativity between two atoms is greater than 1.7, greater than or equal to 1.7. So sodium and fluorine, the difference in electronegativity is 3, so that would be an ionic bond. If the difference of electronegativity is less than 1.7, it is a covalent bond. Neither atom takes electrons from the other, they share them. This type of bonding typically takes place between two nonmetals like hydrogen and chlorine, where the difference in electronegativity is 1.1. There are two types of compounds created by the covalent bonding of atoms. One is a covalent network. Those are larger compounds consisting of repeating elemental or molecular units all covalently bonded together, such as diamond, C sub n, n means a number, a pretty big number, and C of course is carbon, or quartz, silicon dioxide, and there's a whole bunch of them. Once again, that's what the N means. Molecules, smaller compounds of one or more elements bonded together, such as water, H2O, or oxygen gas, O2. Like ionic and metallic substances, covalent network solids don't consist of individual molecules. They form large compounds composed of a continuous network of covalently bonded atoms represented by formula units. Here are two covalent network solids formed from carbon. You have diamond here and graphite here. Both of them only have carbon in them, but the networks look very different, don't they? Here are some properties of covalent network compounds. They are non-conductive. Because they have made of non-metallic atoms, covalent network solids conduct little or no electricity. They are hard. Because all the atoms in the structure are bonded together, these materials tend to be very hard. High melting points. Covalent bonds are strong, and covalent networks have many bonds, giving them high melting points. Molecules are different from ionic compounds or network covalent solids in that they have a specific number of atoms. Water is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. It is not just a fixed ratio, two types of atoms. It has a specific number of each atom. Sodium chloride can have any number of sodium and chlorine atoms as long as the ratio is one to one. Each water molecule has exactly two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Atoms within molecules are held together by strong intramolecular bonds. 
right here, water. These are strong bonds here between the hydrogen and the oxygen. Molecules are attracted together by weak intermolecular forces. And here's the weak intermolecular forces here between the various water molecules. As a result, they have different properties than covalent network compounds. They are non-conductive because they are made of non-metallic atoms. Molecular compounds are excellent insulators and very low melting points. Molecules are small and held together by weak intermolecular forces, not bonds that are easy to break. And once again, here's the weak intermolecular forces between the water molecules. Binary molecules consist of two atoms sharing electrons. All end in ide, like the ides of March. Unlike ionic compounds, each element has a prefix that indicates how many of its atoms are present in the covalent compound. Examples. Nitrogen dioxide. Diphosphorus pentoxide. Pentaoxide, instead of saying that, you just say pentaoxide. Look on your reference sheets for the prefixes. An example is shown to the right. The atom with the lower electronegativity is usually written first. If there is only one of the first atom, leave the mono off. For example, CO is carbon monoxide, not monocarbon monoxide. CO2 is carbon dioxide, not monocarbon dioxide. Polyatomic ions were covered in the last unit. They are two or, more, two or more atoms covalently bonded together, but they are not neutral. They have a charge, right? hence the term ion. Be careful not to confuse them with the neutral covalent molecules. Examples. NO3 with a negative like that is nitrate, that is a polyatomic ion with a charge of negative one. NO3, nitrogen trioxide, is a neutral molecule.